Good morning, everyone. Happy 4th of July, Independence Day to you. Glad you found us online. If you would remember, please sign in. So we have several links that you can follow. Also, we have a link on our website for you to sign in. Remember, we're tracking our attendance. since This is the best way for us to keep track of whether or not you're watching online. Let's get going with our opening song. I could just sit, I could just sit and wait for all your goodness, hope to feel your presence. I could just stay, I could just stay right where I am and hope to feel you, hope to feel something again. Deeper, and I'll go where you will lead. 
We make our beginning in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. To you I lift up my eyes, O you who are enthroned in the heavens. Behold, as the eyes of the servant look to the hand of their master, as the eyes of a maidservant to the hand of her mistress, so our eyes look to the Lord our God, till he has mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us, O Lord, have mercy upon us, for we have had more than enough of contempt. Our soul has had more than enough of the scorn of those who are at ease, of the contempt of the proud. As we pause for a moment for reflecting on our confession and forgiveness time, we're remembering today, specifically from Mark chapter 6, about Jesus' command for us to go and make disciples of all nations and being ready to give witness to the hope that we have inside of us. But at times we recognize that we often fail. And in fact, as we've been working through this discipleship journey, we remember that we don't always remember to pray for our top 10 list. So let's pause a moment and reflect, ask for forgiveness for maybe not being so bold in our own faith. Again, seeking those opportunities for us to share the hope that is inside of us and praying that our Lord Jesus would strengthen us exactly for that purpose. So we pause a moment for reflection. Together we confess, Dear Jesus, Lord of your church, you call us to go and give witness to the hope we have in you. You have called us to teach and disciple others to follow you. You revealed your heart to us when you said you came to seek and save the lost. Forgive our unwillingness to follow you. Equip us to be your disciples. Give us a heart for the lost, so that your kingdom grows among us. Amen. And hear the good news of our loving Heavenly Father, for he indeed has had mercy upon us, and has sent his Son Jesus to die for us. So in the stead and by the command of my Savior Jesus Christ, I forgive you all of your sin, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth and serve the Lord.
Old Testament reading for the sixth Sunday after Pentecost is from Ezekiel chapter 2. He said to me, Son of man, stand on your feet, and I will speak with you. And as he spoke to me, the Spirit entered into me and set me on my feet, and I heard him speaking to me. And he said to me, Son of man, I send you to the people of Israel, to nations of rebels who have rebelled against me. They and their fathers have transgressed against me to this very day. The descendants also are impudent and stubborn. I send you to them, and you shall say to them, Thus says the Lord God, and whether they hear or refuse to hear, for they are a rebellious house, they will know that a prophet has been among them. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle is from 2 Corinthians chapter 12. I must go on boasting, though there is nothing to be gained by it. I will go on to visions and revelations of the Lord. I know a man in Christ who 14 years ago was caught up to the third heaven. Whether in the body or out of the body, I do not know. God knows. And I know that this man was caught up into paradise. Whether in the body or out of the body, I do not know. God knows. And he heard things that cannot be told, which man may not utter. On behalf of this man, I will boast. But on my own behalf, I will not boast, except of my weaknesses. Though if I should wish to boast, I would not be a fool, for I would be speaking the truth. But I refrain from it, so that no one may think more of me than he sees in me or hears from me. So to keep me from being too elated by the surpassing greatness of the revelations, a thorn was given to me in the flesh, a messenger of Satan to harass me, to keep me from being too elated. Three times I pleaded with the Lord about this, that it should leave me. But he said to me, My grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore I will boast all the more gladly of my weaknesses, so that the power of Christ may rest upon me. For the sake of Christ, then, I am content with weaknesses, insults, hardships, persecutions, and calamities. For when I am weak, then I am strong. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the sixth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus went away from there and came to his hometown, and his disciples followed him. And on the Sabbath he began to teach in the synagogue. And many who heard him were astonished, saying, Where did this man get these things? What is the wisdom given to him? How are such mighty works done by his hands? Is not this the carpenter, the son of Mary, the brother of James and Joseph and Judas and Simon? And are not his sisters here with us? And they took offense at him. And Jesus said to them, A prophet is not without honor except in his hometown and among his relatives and in his own household. And he could, not, he could do no mighty work there except that he laid his hands on a few sick people and healed them. And he marveled because of their unbelief, and he went about among the villages teaching. And he called the twelve and began to send them out two by two, and gave them authority over the unclean spirits. He charged them to take nothing for their journey except a staff, no bread, no bag, no money in their belts, but to wear sandals and not put on two tunics. And he said to them, Whenever you enter a house, stay there until you depart from there. And if any place will not receive you, and they will not listen to you, when you leave, shake off the dust that is on your feet as a testimony against them. So they went out and proclaimed that people should repent, and they cast out many demons and anointed with oil many who were sick, and healed them. This is the Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Hi boys and girls, it's Deaconess Kim with the children's message today. So today is the 4th of July. We often celebrate it with fireworks and barbecues, things like that. But do you know why? The 4th of July is the day when we celebrate that we fought for freedom from the control of England. That meant that the English king couldn't take our money anymore or tell us what to do anymore. America became an independent country. So today we celebrate that we are free. Do you know though that we celebrate something like that in the church too? You see, because of our sin, all of those bad things we do, 
there was a time when all of us were controlled by the devil. Now he is a terrible, evil ruler. He might offer us things that seem good, but he wants to separate us from God forever. And by ourselves, we can't fight against him. We're not strong enough to get freedom from the devil. So we were in big trouble. But someone came to fight for us. Someone won our freedom for us. Now we're free from the devil and from sin. Do you know who that someone is? The one who fought for us? I'll bet many of you do. It's Jesus. When Jesus died on the cross and rose from the dead, he defeated the evil devil. As Christians, we celebrate our freedom most on Easter when we remember that Jesus rose from the dead and saved us from the power of the devil. So we're free from sin and the devil. That's really good news. But does it mean we can do whatever we want? No, of course not. Jesus set us free from sin so that we can walk with God and be the people God created us to be. That means using our freedom to honor God and share his love with others. So that's my challenge this week. Use your freedom to love and serve someone else. Will you pray with me? Dear God, thank you God for freedom. Thank you for our country. Most of all, thank you for Jesus, who freed us from the devil. Help us use our freedom to honor you. In Jesus' name, amen. The hour is dark And it's hard to see What you are doing Here in the ruins And where this will lead Oh, but I know That down through the on this moment and see a hand on it and know you were here and I'll testify of the battles you've won how you were my portion when there wasn't enough and I'll testify the seas that we've crossed, the waters you parted, the waves that I've walked, singing, oh, oh, oh my God did not fail, oh, oh, oh it's a story. It's a story I'll tell Believing gets hard When options are few When I can't see what you're doing I know that you're proving You're the God who comes through Oh, but I know That over the See your hand on it and know you were here. And I'll testify of the battles you won. How you were my portion when there wasn't enough. And I'll testify of the seas that we. you parted the waves that I've walked singing oh, 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 oh my God did not fail oh, 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 oh it's a story I'll tell singing oh, oh, oh 
Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, don't say that I didn't warn you. Have you ever said those words before? Or worse, have you ever been haunted by these words before? Probably. Well, these are words that St. Paul certainly could have said. But he also knew that this was an opportunity for the gospel. Remember back in Acts chapter 27, in fact, it was one of our vacation Bible school stories this year when St. Paul was on a ship that was doomed. St. Paul said, Sirs, I perceive that the voyage will be with injury and much loss not only of the cargo and the ship, but also our lives. But the centurion paid more attention to the pilot and to the owner of the ship than what Paul said. Well, you know how this story ends. They should have listened to St. Paul's warning, but they didn't. Everything on that ship was lost, including the ship itself. But fortunately, the Lord did spare the lives of those on that ship. And as a result of that story, we see the tremendous impact that the gospel makes through Paul and his companions on that shipwreck. Right? They ended up on this island and they made friends on the island. How did they make friends on the island? Well, they made friends by bringing the reign and rule of Jesus Christ to that place. They brought them Jesus. Remember, Publius was a man that was pretty much in charge of the whole island, and his father was ill. St. Paul, well, I should say, Jesus healed that man. Not only just the man, but many that were in that island were healed through the power of Jesus Christ, through the power of the Holy Spirit, working through Paul and his companions. The gospel, the proclamation and implementation of the reign and rule of Jesus Christ, well, that works wherever God wills that to work. 
that doesn't always thrive where you would think it. For example, we know St. Paul is a prisoner at this point, and he's being delivered to Rome. But yet, even in the midst of his imprisonment and a shipwreck, God is doing great things through Paul and his companions. In fact, at one point, St. Paul gives us the example of how Jesus works with this, how Jesus reminded him how he works. Remember this in 2 Corinthians chapter 12, when St. Paul says that Jesus says to him, My grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly of my weaknesses, so that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Remember this context is St. Paul is dealing with some sort of affliction, and he prays three times that the Lord would take it away from him. But the Lord says, I know what's best for you. My power is made great in your weakness. Have you ever contemplated this in your own life? It's probably not too hard to find if you think about these sort of things, that indeed Christ is more powerful in us during our weaker times than in our powerful times. Now, I know that this isn't really a a common thing that we boast about in the United States of America, that is, our weaknesses. But when we think about that, when we depend upon Jesus for the things that we are facing In our lives, you see, this is when the gospel becomes powerful. The gospel speaks peace. It speaks comfort. It speaks hope to the many things in this world that seem hopeless or catastrophic or without any hope. You see, this saying still holds true, right? That there are no atheists in the foxholes because when the world begins bombarding us with the trials and tribulations in this life. When life seems uncertain, this is when the gospel is powerful. The gospel is the answer for all the woes of this world. When we live our life for Jesus, we see these opportunities to speak gospel hope, to bring that reign and rule of Christ and his kingdom to that place. These are the opportunities for us to share our hope. St. Mark gives us an example of where we think that the gospel should thrive, but in fact, it doesn't. This is how the people of Nazareth respond. Is not this the carpenter? the son of Mary and brother of James and Joseph and Judas and Simon? And are not his sisters here with us? And they took offense at him. So much for home field advantage. His hometown rejects his authority. They reject his teaching. Well, Jesus does respond by shaking the dust off of his feet when he says, a prophet is not dishonored except in his own hometown. And he even goes on to reference that even his family are questioning his authority. Remember, this isn't uncommon because in Mark chapter 3, we are reminded that at one point, his family thinks that he's crazy. They, along with the church leaders, believe that Jesus is demon-possessed. Wow, talk about a tough crowd. That you find in Nazareth. But it is here that Jesus says that the ones that do the Father's will are his brothers and his sisters and his mothers. That's you and I when we follow after our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. When we are his disciples, we are his brothers and sisters and mothers. Nevertheless, in this context, the gospel is still proclaimed. And it still goes out. Jesus sends out his disciples 
two by two, and he gives them power. Mark 6, 7 says this, and Jesus called the 12 and began to send them out two by two and gave them authority over the unclean spirits. They bring Jesus as they go. They bring Jesus to those they come in contact with. They're bringing God's reign and rule, which includes casting out demons and healing, bringing comfort and peace, bringing the gospel wherever they go. Our discipleship journey is about bringing the reign and rule of Christ to where we go. It was great at Vacation Bible School. One small saint's family came up to me and said that they appreciated so much the chapels that we do on a regular basis. In fact, their kids loved them. And I hear about those that are gathering in small groups and and encouraging one another in prayer and supporting one another in their walk with the Lord. And there are countless examples of our efforts that, that of reaching into the community, working on Larry's house, and, and you name it. But we also have to remember that sometimes our efforts will not bear the fruit that we had hoped. Jesus reminded his disciples about this, and he reminds us about this too. And if any place will not receive you, And they will not listen to you when you leave. Shake off the dust that is on your feet as a testimony against them. Now, of course, we want to keep this in context of saying we need to speak the truth in love. But more importantly, we have to remember that the gospel work is the work of the Holy Spirit. It's not our work. We simply plant the seeds and let the Holy Spirit do His work. This is why it's so important that we're praying for those top 10 names on our list. Those that we want to spend eternity with us in heaven. This is why it's important that we are ready to give witness to the hope that we have in Jesus and leave it as simply stated as that. Our hope. Because our hope may become their hope too. You see, we're looking for those turtles on a fence post because we know that whoever it is that we encounter in this world, that they are going to be going through some trials and tribulations of their own. And we know that this is when the gospel is powerful, when it can speak words of comfort and peace, because this is what Jesus does. This is what we do when we bring God's reign and rule where we go. We bring healing and restoration. By Jesus' power, amen. And now may the peace which surpasses our human understanding guard your hearts and keep your minds in Christ Jesus until life everlasting. Amen. We continue with our worship by the giving of our tithes and offerings, which you are seeing put before you the different options that you have for giving. And we certainly appreciate your continued giving, even though you haven't been able to make it here in person. A great reminder prayer found in our Lutheran service book, hymn number 781, puts this in perspective. We give thee but thine own, whate'er the gift may be. All that we have is thine alone, a trust, O Lord, from thee. Indeed, we are thankful for the blessings our Heavenly Father has given to us, and we pray that these gifts and offerings will continue His kingdom work among us. Our announcements today include our staff, board of directors, and elders all have bios listed now on the kiosk in the narthex. Make sure you swing by there to get to know uh, your church leaders a little bit better, and maybe include those in your prayers this week. Also, We have a reminder that now on our website, we have buttons that can include you or that you can click on to sign up for all of the activities that we have in one place. So that way, when you're reading through your Team Jesus News, if you're wondering where you can sign up, you can simply click on that button in our website. It will take you right there. And our one final announcement, just remember our St. Stephen Lutheran Church 
Liberty Women's Clinic Golf Tournament. That's August 28th. More information in your Team Jesus News on how to sign up for that. Those are our announcements. At this time, we'll make confession of our Christian faith to the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. This morning on our prayers, we want to include Sam Greider for his continued seizure activity. Prayers for Vicki. This is Krista Singh's sister who had a stroke. Continued prayers for Connie. This is Tammy Rarick's sister with Parkinson's. Prayers for Kim. This is Kay Hawk's sister fighting breast cancer. Prayers for Mason. This is Samantha Stone's brother going to boot camp. Prayers for Dennis. This is Barb Norse's brother-in-law that has cancer. Prayers for Lowell. This is Don Greider's father with severe health issues. Prayers for Brian, a friend of Gary and Gail Snyder's fighting cancer. Prayers for Daniel, Diane's daughter, Jennifer's Smith's friend's son with Hodgkin lymphoma. Prayers for Lori. It's a friend of Diana Smith that has breast cancer. She's 49 with five children. Prayers for Hendrix. This is Jade Wisner's niece and also for Jade's grandmother with COVID. Prayers for Karen. This is a friend of Kathy Roberts with brain deterioration disease. Prayers for Jackie, another friend of Kathy Roberts with dialysis and shoulder replacement. And Pat, also a friend of Kathy Roberts that fell and has several broken bones. Prayers of Thanksgiving for Sue Marwitz for good testing results and continued good testing results. And prayers for uh, the Fern Moshman family. This is Tammy Rarick's older kid's grandmother that passed away. So let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Heavenly Father, empower your church to be obedient to following the great commission of making disciples. Especially we ask you to bless our classes the Discipleship Journey, and the Through the Bible series, so that we are better equipped to share the hope of Jesus we have with others. Open doors to our top 10 lists so that we have opportunities to bring the lost into a closer relationship with your Son and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. The Lord brings the counsel of the nations to nothing. He frustrates the plans of the peoples. The counsel of the Lord stands forever, the plans of his heart to all generations. Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord, the people whom he has chosen as his heritage. We give you thanks for the freedoms that you have provided for our worship of you in this nation. And we pray these freedoms are not taken away or limited so that we can proclaim the praises of you who have called us out of darkness into your marvelous light. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Great physician of body and soul, we thank you for all who work with you to bring healing to the sick, relief to the disabled, and comfort to the suffering. Help us never to forget that you are the source of all healing. Intervene for good in the lives of those among us who are hurt and in need of healing. We include Sam, Vicki, Connie, Kim, Mason, Lowell, Dennis, Brian, Daniel, Lori, Hendrix, Jade's grandmother, Karen, Jackie, and Pat. If it be your will, give them healing, restoration, and strength. We give you thanks for the good test results for Sue. Continue to grant healing to her. Please be with those mourning the death of loved ones, including the Moshman family. Death is certainly a reminder to us all to be ready for our final call. Keep us always in your saving faith, where we find comfort in the certain hope of the resurrection of all. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord of life, you called us to be your own through the power of baptism. Help us daily to remember that you have made us your children in baptism. So we celebrate with Georgia, 
April, Bunny, Jim, Kathleen, and Tim as they celebrate their baptismal birthdays. Keep them and all of us in your baptismal promises. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, loving Father, who instituted, ordered, and blessed the estate of marriage between a man and a woman, we give you thanks and praise for this most precious gift. You care deeply about marriage and have promised to be the cord that binds marriage together. We rejoice with Jeremy and Rachel, Carl and Paige, Jack and Connie, and Jim and Bunny as they celebrate another wedding anniversary. Continue to bless and strengthen them and all of our marriages. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, our Heavenly Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with and abide with you always. Amen. Anytime a heart turns from darkness to light, anytime temptation comes and someone stands to fight, anytime somebody lives to serve and not be served, I know, I know, I know, I know. On the move, hallelujah, God is on the move in many mighty ways. God is on the move, on the move, hallelujah, God is on the move, on the move today. Anytime in weakness someone falls upon their knees, or dares to speak the truth that sets men free, Anytime the choice is made to stand upon the word, I know, I know, I know, I know, God is on the move, on the move, hallelujah, God is on the move in many mighty ways, God is on the move, on the move, hallelujah, God is on the move, on the move today. generation standing on the truth and each and every nation God is on the move anytime the gospel stirs a searching soul and someone says send me here I go I know I know I know I know God is on the move on the move hallelujah God is on the move Hallelujah, God is on the move, on the move today. God is on the move, on the move. Hallelujah, God is on the move in many mighty ways. God is on the move, on the move. Hallelujah, God is on the move, on the move today. generation standing on the truth in each and every nation god is on the move 